So coming to the second part of periodontal case sheet recording. Heart tissue examination. So examination of the dentition is very important with respect to the size, shape, alignment of the teeth and their vitality should be noted. Uh, deviation from the normal indicates the reason for periodontal problem. So it can be explained under various wasting diseases. Any gradual of tooth, any gradual change of tooth substance characterized by the formation of smooth poly surface without regard to the possible mechanism of this loss. So it can be defined under different terminologies that is attrition, abrasion, erosion and abfraction. What is attrition? Attrition is the occlusal wear resulting from functional contacts with opposing teeth. So you can see in the picture that a clear cut like the incisal edges will be attreated. So this is attrition. And next coming to the abrasion, there is a pathologic loss to substance induced by mechanical wear. Other than that of mastication, usually tooth brushing, vigorous tooth brushing, horizontal uh, tooth brushing technique will uh, end up in this type of abrasion. Uh, and uh, next coming to the erosion, sharply wedge defined, wedge shaped depression in the cervical area of the tooth surface. There is a main cause which is the decalcification by the acid beverages. Uh, or citric foods acid, uh, and acid regurgitation. So this erosion can happen. And then coming to the abfraction, there is a pathologic loss of heart tissue substance caused by uh, biomechanical loading forces. You can see that in this picture there is a notch. So if there is any uh, like notch type uh, like destruction of tooth surface, it can be categorized as abfraction. So coming to the occlusion, deviation from normal occlusion is a potent factor in the production of periodontal disease. Uh, so any deviation from the normal occlusion is, uh, can affect the periodontium. So in this case, there, like it can be there it can be the various findings and which suspected periodont periodontal conditions. And we have faces that uh, like teeth take up increased forces, excessive mobility of teeth that is occlusal traumatism can occur. Loss of teeth may lead to pathology migration or supra eruption of opposing tooth. Proclaim anterior teeth with incompetent lip and presence of mouth breathing might lead to drying of gingiva and it might lead to gingivitis. Coming to food impaction, forceful wedging of food in the periodontium by occlusal forces that is called uh, impaction, food impaction. So you can see that in this picture there is an open contact in between the teeth and this upper opposing uh, tooth that is with having plunger thus back as a uh, as an agent to wedge the tooth, sorry, wedge the food inside the space. So this is uh, food impaction. So there are various factors that lead to food impaction. Uneven occlusal wear, opening of contact point as a result of loss of proximal support or extrusion of tooth, congenital morphological abnormalities, improperly constructed uh, restoration and excessive anterior overbite. So coming to the trauma from occlusion, so when the occlusal forces exceed the adaptive capacity of the tissue, tissue injury results and this the resultant injury is termed as trauma from occlusion. So there are two types, there is primary and secondary. So when TFO is the result of alteration in the occlusal forces, there is an example you can see that in the first picture there is alteration in the occlusal forces due to the cross bite. Uh, abnormal bite so this can lead to primary TFO so when TFO is a result from inability of the tissue to withstand the uh, or to resist the occlusal forces it, that is secondary TFO you can see this in this picture this tooth is unable to uh, in uh, like unable to withstand the occlusal forces which which is which leads to further bone loss so that is called secondary uh, TFO and which can lead to pathologic tooth migration. So what is pathologic tooth mi migration? So any tooth displacement that results when balance among the factors that bend in the physiology tooth position is disturbed by periodont disease. So if they cannot withstand the normal occlusal forces, this will get migrated. So any pathology condition which leads to this movement is called pathologic tooth migration, which is, which is always associated with gingival inflammation and point pocket formation as the disease progresses. You can see that in occlusal direction it leads to supra eruption. So either it uh, can be migrated to the other mesial or distal side and in supra eruption cases it will it will get uh, supra erupted. You can see this in this picture it is this tooth uh, 2 1 got supra erupted due to pathologic migration. 
Coming to the mobility, all teeth have a slight degree of physiology mobility which varies for different teeth and different time. It occurs in two stages. So one within the in, uh, socket, there is, is where the tooth moves within the confines of periodontal ligament can occur. And second stage is that which occurs gradually and entails elastic deformation of alveolar bone in the response to horizontal forces. So that is the secondary stage. So first one within the confines of periodontal ligament, the other one which entails the elastic demorphation, demo, deformation of the alveolar bone in response to horizontal forces. So this can be uh, checked by uh, either by uh, one finger and uh, one instrument or, or by two instruments. So it is graded into grade 1, grade 2, grade 3. So what is grade 1? It is slight more than normal. Grade 2 is moderately more than normal and grade 3 severe mobility that is means your distally or facial injury combined with vertical displacement. So coming to the furcation involvement. So in multi rooted teeth, uh, rooted teeth the possibility of furcation involvement should be carefully explored. So there, if there is involvement of furcation areas if the periodontal disease reaches the furcation areas that is called furcation involvement. So it can be checked by a specially designed probe called neighbor's probe, so which allows an easier and more accurate exploration of the horizontal component of furcation lesions. So you can see that uh, the one probe is being used in this picture. You can see that one probe has been used for detecting the furcation involvement, but it may not detect the furcation involvement since it is in straight, uh, straight order. Whereas you can see that in the second picture, it is a curved one that is the uh, neighbor's probe which has been used to enter the furcation area that is why it has explores the horizontal component so for the vertical component you can detect with the uh, probe whereas for the horizontal component you need to use the neighbor's probe so under classification we are following Lippmann's uh, grading of furcations so one that is the incipient uh, loss of bond in the furcation area and in the grade 2 Lippmann's grade 2 furcation is that is uh, intact one wall with loss of uh, loss of one uh, bony wall which uh, which permits the entrance of uh, probe inside and which acts as a cul-de-sac and grade 3 is that which allows the passage of probe through and through but it will be covered one of the wall will be covered by soft tissues whereas grade 4 it is which is which is allows the uh, passage of probe through and through but it will not be covered by soft tissues. Coming to the indices taken, the most important indices which we are taking for the Keshita are oral hygiene index simplified, modified sulcus bleeding index and Russell's periodontal index. So which help to assess the oral hygiene status and severity of gingival bleeding and assess the status of periodontium so which uh, might uh, predict the outcome of the treatment. So coming to the basic periodontal examination so which is important that is BPE so which we will be assessing uh, sextants that is 17 to 14, 13 to 3, 24 to 27 region and 34 to 37, 43 to 33, 44 to 47. So the scoring codes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and star. So 0, 1, 2 that is pockets will be less than 3.5 with 0 no uh, calculus or overhangs, no bleeding on probing. So the black man will be uh, clearly seen that we are using WHO probe with uh, like ball and with 0.5 mm with 3.5 to 5.5 color coding markings 8.5 and till 11.5 so for this uh, if the pockets the one is denotes that pocket if less than 3.5 so that black band will be seen no calculus or overhangs with bleeding on probing so first one is bleeding on probing two will be so pocket will be less than 3.5 with overhangs, calculus overhangs. So 0 it's quite normal, 1 with the bleeding on probing, 2 with the calculus or overhang. So black band entirely visible for 0, 1, 2. Whereas 3 the probing depth will be uh, in between 3.5 to 5.5 so black band will be partially visible. So indicating that a pocket depth of 4 to 5 mm which is mild uh, periodontitis. Then the probing depth if it is greater than 5.5 there is you are not uh, uh, like visible the black band is totally disappears which indicates a pocket depth of 6 m or more so if there is uh, any furcation involvement it is denoted as a star so there is the uh, scoring codes under bp 
so the guide uh, guidelines for our guidance on interpreting the vp is close to zero that is quite everything that is normal so that is excellent prognosis so no need for uh, of periodontal treatment if there is bleeding on probing that means there is gingivitis so oral hygiene instructions uh, can be given and scaling can be done whereas where there is uh, so gingival calculus overhangs and all that is as for a cord one plus you can use like a removal of plaque retentive factors including supra uh, including all supra and subgingival calculus then as for cord 2 that is with the uh, uh, sorry cord 3 that is as for cord 2 and uh, root surface debridement if required so there is mild pocket depth so you can go for normal scaling and then root planing if needed then uh, for the 4 that is if there is greater than 5.5 uh, mm that is a pocket of 6 mm is there so then um, oral hygiene instructions with the normal scaling and then root planing that is uh, that is the need for more complex treatment if there is if it is needed then refer to specialist then uh, fercation involvement is there uh, treat according to uh, like vp score 4 and assess the need for any complex treatment same like that you have to refer to specialist for further treatment so you can uh, read on uh, more on uh, vp on uh, like using this uh, link coming to the diagnosis establishing the diagnosis of a specialized periodontal disease is a process in which examiner utilizes all the informations that we have assembled they will evaluate it and will come to the diagnosis so there are different uh, diagnostic patterns that is clinically healthy gingiva with reduced periodontium uh, that is with quiet normal uh, with uh, reduced periodontium can be uh, which can be due to the successful treatment which lead in stable periodontitis or non periodontitis like cervical abrasion and crown lengthening also and uh, it can be categorized into localized or generalized gingivitis uh, that is or periodontitis based on the sites involved localized if it is less than 30 percentage sites involved generalized if it is greater than 30 percentage sites involved so that is inflammation of the gingiva with bleeding on probing may indicate gingivitis then uh, coming to the periodontitis we will assess all the for pocket depth percussion involvement recession and we will come to the diagnosis of periodontitis whether it's localized or generalized then we have to go for staging and grading according to the staging and grading criteria as we have already covered the classification so i am not repeating the same thing then coming to the prognosis prognosis also we have covered in separate chapter this is the prediction of probable course duration and outcome of the disease based on that you have to categorize as overall prognosis and if if any uh, teeth uh, like localized area if it is involved you have to go for individual prognosis also then categorize it as excellent, good, fair, poor, questionable or hopeless. So coming to the treatment plan, this is the preferred sequence of periodontal therapy. Uh, we have uh, all, this also we have already covered. So I am just uh, making it uh, like short that is emergency phase, non-surgical phase to maintenance phase. So under phase 4 therapy, it will go under phase 2 that is surgical phase and restorative phase and again it will come to maintenance phase so these are the phases of uh, periodontal therapy so uh, what is uh, preliminary phase that is if any pain that is abscess all should be treated under this and extraction of hopeless teeth should be also under preliminary phase non-surgical phase that is cause related factors that is phase one therapy so non-surgical periodontal therapy usually comes under non-surgical phase then uh, again uh, evaluation after uh, two weeks if there is inflammation you have to re-evaluation to re-evaluate the uh, if we, you have to re-evaluate the patient after two weeks then uh, if it is indicated then should be referred to uh, referred for surgical phase and uh, if there is any restorative phase needed you have to refer for phase three and then again coming to the maintenance phase so under maintenance phase we have already uh, like studied under a supportive periodontal therapy so we have Marin's classification so during the first year of the patient and under full healing you can call up within uh, three months and within one to two months for the first uh, review first year patient and after that you have to categorize according to the uh, oral hygiene status and the uh, periodontal condition that is class a there is excellent results so that 
six months to one year if there is like food full uh, good oral hygiene minimal calculus no other pockets like um, uh, no teeth less than 50 percent then six months to one year once in they call the patient once in six months to one year so the class b if there is any infant inconsistent or poor oral hygiene heavy calculus with systemic diseases and uh, so many occlusal problems process is uh, then ongoing orthodontic therapy uh, dental caries and with smoking patient positive family history or genetic test uh, has been positive so anything like that then you have to recall the patient once in uh, three to four months and class c it's very poor results it is generally poor results after periodontal therapy very uh, like less response to the treatment uh, with the all these factors then you have to call once in uh, three months or once in uh, like one to three months so that is the maintenance phase so coming to the so we have discussed all the uh, periodontal case sheet recordings all the procedures all the steps and now we have come across with some of the uh, case based uh, scenarios so we have given uh, three cases and you have to uh, read and uh, like write down the answers and should report to the department so for case one, that is a, uh, a three, 38 year old uh, Caucasian male, systematically healthy, non-smoker reported to the clinic for regular dental checkup. You can see the first picture and second picture for the occlusal upper and third picture for the occlusal uh, lower. Clinical features we have given like oral hygiene, good, full mouth plus score 10%. Full mouth bleeding score eight percent age generalized sulcus depth of less than three mm no evidence of clinical attachment loss BP uh, scores also we have given so this is a chart we have provided for step one BP and step two and you have to come to the correct diagnosis so along with you have to give appropriate mechanical plaque control aid for this given case patient. And also chemical plaque control agent so we have already covered under plaque control uh, both the mechanical and chemical plaque control agents so coming to the case 2 study there is a 29 year old female patient was referred from motor on this for opinion on recession in relation to 13112123 so oral hygiene is good full fmps 10 percentage fmbs 15 percentage Generalized sulfur depth less than or equal to 3 mm. Here, attachment loss of 5 mm in relation to 2, 3, uh, and 3 mm in relation to 1, 1, uh, 4, 5, 2 mm in relation to 1, 2, 1, 3, and RT type 1 gingiva recession for 1, 3, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, BP score has been given. So, OPG also we have given, and this is the uh, diagnosis chart you have to record the write down the findings and should come to the uh, diagnosis select the appropriate mechanical plaque control agent and chemical case 3 is a 3 year old female patient wants to get her deposits removed and this is the uh, photo the first photo with the labial side occlusal upper side and lower occlusal oral hygiene poor FMPS 80 percentage, FMBS 60 percentage, generalized sulcus depth, again less than or equal to 3 mm, no evidence of clinical attachment loss. BP score has been given. So we have to come to the diagnosis by write down the by writing the findings. And select the appropriate mechanical plaque control agent and chemical plaque control. For today, so to conclude, the I see only what the mind knows. Information gathered from history and examination overwhelming when used correctly, which leads to solution or uh, diagnosis as well as the solution. Data produced by comprehensive examination requires skill and attention to detail of examiner. Skill in diagnostic process requires constant learning. Initial dental student to experienced dental practitioner. Thank you.